Yes, we got this. So far, so good. Hello, beautiful. We need to take note of all the questions. Yes, you guys. I love those questions. Those questions are so good. Are we not brilliant here? Like, honestly, I think that my people are the smartest people. My people are the smartest people because you guys have the best questions. You really do. So, oh, all the love. I love your love. Thank you. Two minutes. Two minutes to Connell. So uh, we're going to watch for him. We're going to watch for him to join in. Um, I wonder, I wonder, wonder. How can you let people join in too? Maybe ask why he thinks lots of guys seek attention of other girls by liking posts. Mmm. Oh, these questions are so good. What's this? These questions. Uh-oh, my lawnmower tipped over. <laughs> we have a robot lawnmower and I get like notifications every now and then that it's like not happy. Um, good, 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 good. Hello, Glamour Queen. Question. I got my little question box lighting up. Uh, ooh, fiance moved to my state. We bought a new home. I still feel like I can't trust him. Any suggestions? How to not be clingy? Yes, love this. Question from stories. This is so brilliant. It's matching up. That's good. Um, fiance moved to my state. We bought a new home. I still feel like I can't trust him. Um, I wonder, so you, I still feel like I can't trust him. It sounds like he has done something um sent a request to be in a live video so guys my husband's calling baby hi babe. hi live? yes i'm live <laughs> <laughs> you're so smart now damn hey, it you, uh robo fell in a hole i i saw that on my notifications oh it did how long ago like a minute ago oh really yes Okay, well, he's back out. Can you send him home? Okay, I will. Thanks, babe. I love you. I love you. Bye. So my husband has named our lawnmower Robo. Dating transformation, here we are. Connell's here. Connell's here. Uh, hey, Connell, how are you? Hey, what's going on, Chantel? How are you tonight? Oh, living, living, living. How are you? I'm fantastic. Let me just get you in the right spot here. So I know. You're not all hopping around. There we go. So we got we got a ton of people live now. Fantastic. I'm so psyched to be here. Canada, the US joining forces the way it should yes. be. Yes. The way it should be, right? No division. Nope. No I'm division, a, all on the right side. I'm, I'm a down big for fan. it. I love Vancouver. I love Molson. I love Canadian Club. We're going to get along great. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. So, listen, you got a book. We got to talk about that because I got a lot of people who are interested at the fact that you wrote a book to, like man to man about dating, right? Yes, yes. And I have, I have a ton of people who have a ton of questions. By the way, what's the title of your book? Dating sucks, but you don't. Right. So, okay, first of all, Connell, I got to know, are you single? I am a very single man. I was dating and married to this book for the last year and a half. Right. And, but for the last month, I've been back out on the scene practicing what I preach, meeting some wonderful women on Bumble and uh, a dating app called The League. So I'm back out there. Ooh, the League. That sounds good. I never heard of that one. Tell me about it. The league is for, it's imagine if Tinder was cross Tinder with Harvard. You have yeah. to get, you have to get admitted a uh, higher caliber of singles in my view on the league. And mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's members only. So there's a little bit of a join the club kind of vibe, which I like because dating should be about quality, I think. So it's, it's clubhouse for dating. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's good. It's very clubhousey. And uh, it's a great app for me. Okay. Love it. Um, what is your relationship history? Well, I was married many, many moons ago, back in my late 20s. And I essentially made a mistake. A wonderful woman, not right for me. And 
I did something that I think a lot of people do, which is I settled. She yeah. settled for me. I settled for her. I took what I could get. And at, nine weeks after our marriage, she dumped me okay. for a guy on a Harley. And, um, and that's actually what sent me off on my dating coach journey is I felt, well, my, the one woman who wanted to be with me, I felt, dumped me. So I need to go out into the world, work with all these coaches and find out sort of the, the art of romantic connection, find out how it works. How do you talk to girls? How do you make real connections? And that was how it all started. How old were you when you got married? I was 28. How old are you now? I'm 49. Sweet, 48. Nice. Look at us. We look good. I don't know. Look at the Almost Coaches Club. Yeah, I'm clinging. It. I'm clinging to the last weeks of my 40s. <laughs> we have to. Um, let me see here. I got some questions. I got some Fire questions. So, um, so somebody's asking how to not be clingy. Okay. How to not be clingy. Depends on the context. I would say on a, in the first few dates, you want to, I actually, let's look at the first date. What we want to do on a first date to not be clingy is let the person win you over. Right. Show interest, lean, lean forward and show interest, but don't give away your interest, your attraction, your affection until they've earned it. It's, it can be clingy and a bit eager to do that too soon. However, once you find out that you have the same taste in music or, uh, or the same, you love the same sports team, or you guys both are really into the same podcast, then it's okay to, to show them you're interested, but then it's not clingy. So right. let it be earned. Let that connection be earned. Right. Is there such thing as too much texting? Too much texting? Sure. Yeah. Sure. What would be but like? the ratio like how how can how can women text in a way that actually doesn't turn men off that's a great question i think the secret to texting it's not worrying about how frequent it's worrying about the quality of the text messages so my view of texting i'm going to give you your your viewers my four word system for texting okay. give 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 and then ask so okay. you give good emotions you flirt you send a funny cat video, you ask them a good question, you give that other person good emotions, make them feel good. And then every so often you ask for what you want, like a date or a phone call. The way that the mistake that many people make, especially men, but women do this too, is most of their texts are asking. They want, they ask too quickly. Hey, let's get that drink. Let's meet up. Let's hang out. What are you doing? Make your text, 75% of them should be giving value and only about one out of four should be asking for something. Okay. Um, what are we supposed to make about guys who say they don't want to talk on the phone or FaceTime? Well, I think that some guys, some guys don't want to do that because they're not confident with their mm -hmm. communication skills. So mm -hmm. if, a, and one of the things I've seen as, as a dating coach for men, I noticed that probably the number one problem men have or the most common problem that they talk to me about is I don't know what to say. Uh, I don't know the witty cool lines. So I would tell a guy, if you feel that way, lower the bar for how good your conversation has to be. You're not doing a TED talk. You're not doing a stand up comedy routine. You're just talking to a woman. And I would tell women, if you find a guy who seems shy to get on the phone, uh, invite him, let him know it's going to be fun. Say, yeah. hey, let's have, and make it easy to say yes to. Say something like this. Hey, how about a quickie phone date? Or right. how about a quick chat? Because some guys say no because they think it's going to be a two-hour thing. How about a 15, 20-minute quickie date? Who could say no to that? Yeah. I like that you say that because one of the things that I tell women is the easier you make it, the more likely you are to get it. Yes, absolutely. Lower that bar. So for, here's a good tip for first dates. Do not say, hey, how about a three-course steak dinner sitting across from each other with tablecloths? No. Okay. I, like, I used to have an Australian dating coach buddy. He used to say, how about a sneaky coffee? Uh -huh. Let's go out for a, a sneaky coffee, a sneaky drink, a quick drink. You're right. Totally right. You're going to get more dates if you make that first date seem really easy to say yes to. Yeah. 
I like the idea of a walk too, instead of like interviewing each other across a table. No interviews. Yeah. It's not 60 minutes. It's not a deposition. <laughs> it's a yeah. date. And, and I think too, people get like in sort of like a, a rut, right? Like it's, it's, they line up interviews and it's the same question over and over. And they, they start to bring this like, uh, here we go again, kind of energy. Um, right. and, and we're always infecting each other, right? We don't need to say anything in order to pick up on what the other person's thinking. So I think a walk just adds a lot of freshness to the environment every single time. I like walks. I like any date where there's an activity to do besides sitting across from each other. Yeah. or sitting next to each other and I like walks I like bowling because you can check each other out <laughs> right. I, I like I like ping pong first dates anything where there's a game involved because there can be some fun playful trash talking which can sort of dial up that that fun little repartee that a lot of people like I know I like that so yeah choose an activity date it gives you something to talk about besides here we are having a drink asking each other interview questions which is not what you want it's no fun. Uh, nope. So somebody says, um, ask why he thinks lots of guys seek attention of other girls by liking posts. That's passive aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> like that. It's fine to like a post. If you like somebody's post, great, like the post. But I teach my clients, you know, I'm the real life hitch. I teach men to be men, but, but with integrity and respect for women, but still lead right i feel like it's a man's job within reason it's a man's job to lead so liking a post and hoping a woman likes likes it back and writes you i don't like the balls in your court frame of things i like a man to say hey maybe maybe like the post and send her a message complimenting her on why you liked it yeah. that might spark an actual conversation where you can get a little bit of a connection and that could lead somewhere but don't just like a post it's that's passive too passive so now I understand where you came from with that answer. I know that's not what my ladies meant. They mm, mean okay. if uh, like he's dating you, he's interested in you, he might even be committed to you, but he's liking other girls' pictures. Oh, yeah. I see. So he's on social media liking other women's pictures, but he's dating you. Mm. He's... He sh is it exclusive? Because if it's exclusive, that's a definite no-no. That's right. no good. No yeah. bueno. If, um, if it's still early days, if you're still courting each other and you haven't had that talk yet, he does have a right to do that. He mm -hmm. can like other women's posts. I would say don't focus on that because that's not going to serve you. That's not going to help you get closer to him. I would say out of sight, out of mind. Don't Try not to pay attention to who he's liking if you're just in that counting dates phase so here's the thing about the counting dates phase when you say counting dates how many dates should it be before a kiss 3.7 just kidding Three. No. <laughs> no 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 i just made that up it could be it could be anywhere from it could be that date it could be the first night it could be the end of the first night it could be half an hour in or it could be date three or four it depends on it depends on the chemistry and there's not a perfect answer. I don't really count dates so much as I suggest men and women allow themselves, give themselves time to feel the chemistry, feel the connection. And then you can totally make out whenever you're both ready, whether it's date one or date two or three. I will say if three dates come and go and tongues have not touched, there's a chemistry problem there. Some Or somebody's not making a move. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so are you, are you talking about like dating just for sex or are you talking about dating for a long-term committed relationship? I'm talking about dating for a passionate one-on-one -on -one long-term relationship. Absolutely. So the real future thing. Future husband and wife, future making kids together, future buying if that's together. Definitely future exclusive you and me together. One plus one equals 27, whether it's marriage, kids, uh, that depends on, of course, the couple. But I, I want men to have options. And I want women to have options as well. A lot of men come to me because they feel like they just don't have options. They don't, 
they, they do what I did, which was settle for the first woman who winked at him, basically. And I want men, I don't, I don't want men to play the field in any kind of uh, Lothario pickup artist way. That said, I do recommend men and women date around a little bit to see who you connect with and have chemistry with. Because a great way to choose that long-term relationship is, wow, uh, Erica and Brianna are incredible, but man, Carly and me, we just have a special connection. I'm going to pursue things with her. That's how I suggest men do it. So does a kiss mean commitment? Like, like if, if we kiss, does that mean like we're not seeing other people? No, I don't think so. Now, so, somebody might have that rule in their, in their right. blueprint, but right. I don't think that's the way most people look at it. Um, I think a, a first kiss a kiss just means you re you really both feel that romantic connection. Uh, yeah. Maybe you're seeing other people, maybe you're not. So, and this is very much a male pattern of thinking, right? Because when it comes to men, you're speaking as a man, right? So when it comes to men speaking as a man, a kiss doesn't necessarily mean commitment. Just because right. I kiss you today, doesn't mean I'm not gonna go on a date with her tomorrow and maybe kiss her tomorrow. That's true, that's true. Right. So here's the thing though, like I come from at this from a woman's point of view. Mm. And if I kiss you today, I don't know if you know this, but if I kiss you today, I'm not kissing somebody else tomorrow. I'm not even going on a date with somebody else tomorrow. If I kiss you today and somebody else asks me out, I say, no, I'm seeing somebody. That's fair. I think that's totally fair. I, that said, I do know and have dated women who are also kissing multiple men mm -hmm. over the course of their dating experience. My first post COVID date was uh, just a few weeks ago and we kissed and then we did a little thing that I just happened on the date we pinkies for. And I said, okay, our, our, our pinkies are linked. We cannot lie. And I, and she, and I said, when was the last man you kissed? And she said, um, two weeks ago. And mm -hmm. she said, what about you to me? And I said, uh, about, 14 months ago <laughs> because of lockdown. <laughs> um, so she was, so I think, I think as long as both people are honest with each other and maybe it's up to that, for that woman to say, Hey, by the way, I don't, I don't kiss a lot of people. I only kiss somebody I really like. How do you feel about that? Getting that yeah. communication out on the table so that both he and she know where you stand. I think that's a great idea. Yes. 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 Um, so you know, before By the way, just so you know, I am seeing, I am seeing other Instagram hosts. Just so you know, I oh, just. Oh, you gotta go, right? Well, no, I'm saying, I'm saying it's not, you know, no, no, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I was making, I was I making know. a joke. I know, I know, and see, here's the thing, though. Like, I'm not looking for exclusivity right now. I'm just out to play. But when yeah. I'm, when I'm looking for like, and when I'm out to play, I'm just out to play. Like, I'll kiss him, I'll kiss him, I'll fucking kiss him all in one night. Like, I don't care when I'm out to play, I'm out to play. But when I'm looking for a relationship, the one I kiss is the one I tend to lock into. So if, if, I'm, if I'm playing, I'm playing. But when I'm dating to find a relationship, that kiss locks me in. And it, it, okay. it compels me to say to the next person, no, I'm seeing someone. And, and it's, it's a pattern with women. Like, most women are like that. And I think most men don't understand that because mm. you're a man. So you don't have the female brain, right? We don't have the same biology. Like we look at our outsides, they're different. Uh, we look at our, our chemical makeup, it's different, testosterone, estrogen. So of course the brain structure is different. We don't perceive things in the same way. You guys have a nothing part in your brain. I'm like, what the fuck's a nothing part? So there's some differences that happen. So you guys kiss and kiss and kiss. And it's like, you know, yeah, I'm kissing and I'm being passionate and I'm making out with you and I'm testing all this chemistry, but I haven't chosen anybody yet. And that makes sense to you because your biology is seed planter. Your fertility cycle is 24 seven. You're designed to be eager and not attached with sexuality. Mm. But our fertility cycle is a couple of days a month. And so when we're in mate seeking mode and we kiss somebody, something clicks in our brain says I found the mate and so we lock into that person so but you guys don't get that because you don't have the same brain structure and biology and so what I teach women how to do is use a no kissing for three months dating rule because when we are in mate seeking mode like when we talked earlier about finding somebody who's going to be the future husband future wife future you know parent of your child 
if I'm playing, my, my list is this long, right? Am I attracted to you? And do I trust you? If I'm looking for my partner, the list is this long. So mm. how much time do you think a person needs to figure out if somebody is all this? Well, what if, so you have a th no kissing for three months rule, right? Well, what if, what if a woman you give that rule to meets an incredible guy and his rule is different? His rule is, I'll kiss a woman if I feel incredible connection and chemistry. Uh, mm -hmm. well, there's going to be a conflict there. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the sentiment behind your rule. At the same time, uh, we're looking at an end result here. We're looking at, let's find an incredible person to make my life and his life better. Mm -hmm. And to that point, I would say, I would, I would, I would say, hey, three months is a good general rule, but you're going to lose some really great guys if you have mm -hmm. no kissing for three months. And I would also say that, I don't, I don't know, maybe the kinds of men who make out with lots of women, like it's The Bachelor or something, those aren't my guys. My guys are a lot more like your women. My guys fall hard. And when they kiss a woman, it's usually because, wow, she's something really special and he's not out kissing different women every night. Um, I think I think about 10 to 20 percent of single men are that player uh, Mr. Make out a lot and maybe seven to eight out of ten guys are a lot more like me and my clients which are which is hey let's go on a few dates but we're looking for that one woman who we do have that chemistry with and then we, we dial in on her if she'll kiss us <laughs> sooner than three months. Yes. So, you know, you said, like, I'll lose a lot of great guys. Am I going to lose the guy that thinks I'm a really great girl? If he wants to kiss you sooner than three months, then you might. You might. Right. That's fine. If, That's if, fine. So let me ask you this, though. Um, of course, he wants to kiss me sooner than three months, right? He met me and he wanted to kiss me within 24 hours, probably. Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, that's a given. Um if he thinks I'm a really great girl, but three months is too long to wait, so he's going to move on. Did he really think I was such a great girl? And what was more important, my character and personality, whether or not I'd be a good wife and mother, or getting what he wanted when he wanted it? Well, that's a great theoretical question. I think that three months is a logical rule, right? It's a decision. It's not baked into our nature to wait three months. We, wanna, we see somebody we want, and we want them. Doesn't mean we have to have them right away. Wait, 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 wait. Baked into our nature. Yes, you, the male. Yes, you, the male. Baked into this nature. The female, the carrier. The carrier. We have to be more careful in our selection process. So mm -hmm. I think baked into us is vetting. Is, is like. Absolutely. You know, give me some time to figure out who you are first before I commit to you. I think, no, I, I think that we both agree. I would just argue that three months as a one size fits all rule for women could come at a cost of losing out on some guys who say, look, I'll take it slow with you. I don't, I don't want to jump into bed. I want to respect yeah. you. But three months is a long time to find out if our lips feel good together. And um, that could, I think some women might lose some great guys and some guys are going to lose out on those great women because of that logical, um, that logical rule to protect yourself, which is, a, it's a well-intentioned. I just think, whoa, three months, I'd have trouble waiting that long if I really liked her, to be honest. Okay. Does that mean you lack impulse control? It might. Okay. <laughs> it might. I think it just means I like to make out with a really cute girl who I'm into. Yes, yeah. And then seriously, like I, like I said, like, I mean, I've, I've, ser dude, I've walked into a Dairy Queen, looked at a guy, said, I want to kiss you, went up to him, said, I want to kiss you, made out with him in the parking lot, got back in the car and left. So don't get me wrong. It's, I used to be a stripper. Like I've, I've taken both my husband to swingers club. So this doesn't come from like a prude place at all, but it comes from, you know, a, a pushback against this culture that says we need to kiss by the for the date. Otherwise, there's something wrong. And it's like, wait a second. Shouldn't we know, like, shouldn't we actually get to know each other before choosing each other for long term committed relationships? I think both people should move around the bases as fast or as slow as they both want, whether it's three months or three days or three years. 
Uh, yeah. the, be the best, most connected, most amazing lovemaking experience I've ever had in my life. It's in chapter 13 of my book. It was when Alex is her name in the book. We waited uh, about four months before we went to bed. We did, we did kiss before that. And it was incredible. And I'm so glad we waited. At the same time, we did kiss a few days into it. And I'm glad we did that too. But so yeah. um, I think that to, I think that What's really important is being present, calibrating yourself to what you want, what the other person wants, and moving at a reasonable rate of speed, whatever it is, as long as it's not too fast. But I would also say not too slow. Right. And I think three months is pretty damn slow. So here's the thing, though. You know we're on best behavior syndrome in the beginning, right? Say again? You know that we're on, I, I call it best behavior syndrome. Like, you know, like the honeymoon phase, right? You, you sleep less, but you're not tired. You're the best version of yourself. You don't get the hangries, right? You don't, you're not that grumpy person that you tend to be normally. Like if you're a grumpy person in the morning, in the beginning, you're not a grumpy person in the morning because you're on a chemical high. Even if you don't kiss, even if, because Mother Nature puts you on a chemical high so that you discern from other people. If you mm. and I meet and I don't go into a chemical high, you're no different from anybody else. So what would ever compel me to kiss you? But, you know, so, so that newness does create some excitement regardless of the kiss. It's just the chemical and the kiss kind of puts you over the top. But so with that, that chemical high that you're on, you're not quite yourself. So isn't it a good idea to sort of let the chemical high wear off and then get a sense of reality of the person before committing to a long-term relationship? Yes, I agree with everything you just said. Yeah. That's different than not kissing them for three months, though. Ooh, I would say I'm, I'm not going to make a relationship decision based on one or two nights. Well, right. one, of the loves of my, one of the loves of my life, and this is not what I'm about necessarily. I, right. I don't believe you should jump into bed any on the first night at all, necessarily, unless you're both just <laughs> really feeling it. But I, the love of my life, one of them, I've had maybe two, uh, we hooked up the first night. We met at a club, came back to my apartment had what I thought was gonna be a one night stand and it turned into a 1000 night stand. Mm -hmm. We just continue to get closer and closer and closer. Nothing about that jumping into bed together quickly uh, turned me off or her off. I didn't mm -hmm. discard her. In fact, I was beginning to fall in love. So I think that we're awfully, as people, you know, we're, we contain multitudes, we're complex, we're sexual beings, we, but we're animals but we respect each other or humans. Um, I just feel like everybody's got their own specific set of rules and you need to work together and just really communicate well and um, wait as long as you want. I totally say, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But whether it's one night or one year, who knows? Yeah. And I got some people that are like, oh my God, no kissing. No kissing doesn't mean no affection. There's certainly a deficit in our culture where we think affection starts with a kiss. Um, I like the idea of creating gen, like, like, here's the thing. We, we do the kiss by the fourth date because just like you said, there's a, there's a stigma. If you don't, there's something wrong, right? Like, the, like we started this conversation with saying, if, if tongues have been touched by the fourth date, there's a deficit in the chemistry. There's something wrong, right? So there's like a social pressure to get that kiss in by the fourth date. And so we, we start affection with the kiss which is basically starting affection with sexual intimacy rather than intimacy intimacy. Mm. And if we, if we say, you know what, let's set a date for the kiss like three months out from when we first meet face to face um, and see what happens during this time. And then you start feeling warm and fuzzy. I feel warm and fuzzy. We start holding hands. We start cuddling up. We start snuggling. We start slow dancing, right? Which I did, fucking slow dancing in my kitchen, super romantic. So you're, you're creating all this like genuine intimacy before the sexual intimacy. Kissing is a sexual act because the chemicals released in a kiss are an aphrodisiac, also an amphetamine, also an antidepressant. Another reason why I like to hold off on the kiss because that three, that honeymoon period is like without the kiss, cocaine. With the kiss, heroin. And, and we kind of go over the top in our minds and we're like, oh my God, he's so amazing because we feel so good, right? And so we're attributing that to you. You're so amazing because we feel so good. It's actually the kiss chemical that makes us feel so good. So it's a fake feel good. 
we're on best behavior syndrome, another fakeness to it. And, and then, you know, comes the three month mark, the honeymoon period wears off, that chemical high wears off, the red flags start popping up. But we go, oh, but that was so good. If I try harder, because, you know, we're in a relationship because we've been kissing. If I try harder, I can keep this relationship and make this work. So now we're six months in, and then we get what's called an escalation of commitment. You know, oh, I don't want to waste this time. I don't want to start over again. I give it another six months. Now we're a year in before we finally give up and call it quits. And I just wonder how many of those, and sometimes seven years, like seriously, I'll ask many people like, how long have you been in the wrong relationship for? And they're like, two, five, seven, 20, 16 years. And I wonder how many of those relationships would have not happened if there had been a no kissing for three months dating rule. I wonder how many of those people would have been eliminated at two and a half months or before. All I know is that kissing is how we express affection, desire, in time, love, and that it feels good. And that what I want to do for the men I coach and the men who read my book is help them uh, help them get the confidence to go for that kiss mm -hmm. when he meets a woman who's open to be kissed on the first few dates, whether it's date two or three. And to be honest, I don't really I don't really go for that many logical, psychological, logic based rules as long as both people are comfortable kissing. So mm -hmm. whether it's month three or date three or minute three. I'm a believer in following your affection, following your need to connect. Um, we're already in our heads enough with dating. We doubt ourselves. We worry about what we're going to say, whether or not we're good enough, whether or not the other person likes us. I, um, I, I want my guys, my clients, and people who read my book to be able to say, you know what, I want to be that guy who can go for the kiss as long as she's giving me the signals, and I think she wants me to, and hopefully help to dial up that romantic connection, whether it's minute three, day three, or month three. Right. Uh, I just, I just, I like, I like creating like, like, and this is, this is like, and I know this is a male thing, right? Is, is get that chemistry, get that romance, get that physicality, get that sexuality in. Um, and it's, 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 it's the physical before the factual, right? Like, are we actually a good match? Um, are you financially responsible? Uh, you know, are you the kind of person who can sacrifice one marshmallow today for two marshmallows tomorrow? Are you still pursuing other girls? There's so many things that need to be looked for. You know, are you including me in your life? Like before, in my mind, before a kiss should happen, if you're not introducing me to people that are important to you, it means we're not even friends yet. So we're going to start a relationship before we even start a friendship. I like making out with cute girls and cute girls like making out with me, some of them. So um, I, I, I hear your point. I, I, think, I think that's a bit too complex. Uh, my, my guys are so in their head just about, oh my God, how do you go for the first kiss? Uh, right. When do you go for the first kiss? And uh, I think that, look, we're, what's that song? You and me, baby, we ain't nothing but mammals. So I right. think a, a, no. a kiss, no. a, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand my ground and say, I'm pro kiss when the two of you are ready to do it. And if you have your three month rule, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. I just think the reason why, why we have this ready to do it by the fourth date, it's, it's, a, it's like a cultural pressure. It's not actually based on like really thinking about what it is that you need to be looking for in a relationship. Oh, I say kiss on the first date. Don't worry about You're yeah. right no societal pressure yeah, cause seal the deal seal the at deal all. seal the deal no no yeah. not at all do you uh think, listen like, I, I... go ahead go on go on sorry no i forget what i was gonna say so please continue okay um let's take some questions from people let's take some questions let me see what we have here i see like there's uh, my fiance moved to my state and we bought a new home. I still feel like I can't trust him. Any suggestions? How can women create more trust with their men? This is her, this is her fiance. She said yeah. moved to her state. Yeah. How can women create more trust in a man? Yeah. I think this is such a cliched answer, but I, you just both have to be incredibly vulnerably honest with each other. 
And mm -hmm. trust is something that's earned, uh, especially from the female point of view from the man. I think men tend to have trouble being honest with women. And I completely get her issue with trusting him. I think women, you tell me, you know more about this than I do in terms of how our minds work and chemicals and how our bodies are wired. But I think that women are just so much more honest and transparent in relationships than men are. Right. And I think it's incumbent yeah. on men I don't think she can make him more honest and trustworthy. I think it's got to come from inside of him. And men just need to focus on being incredibly honest, transparent, and uh, both loving and truthful with women. So I don't know that she can make that happen. It's got to come from inside of him. How can a man prove to a woman that he's trustworthy? Like, how, how, how can she get to a place of, like, confidence in him? Well, if I had to boil down my book into two words, three words for men, my message is be radically authentic. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, is show her the real you. Lean into who you are as a man. Uh, be vulnerable. If you're a nerd, show her that nerdy side. If you're uh, intelligent, intellectual, a hipster, show her that side. Because we're always broadcasting who we are at all times. We're, we're always kind of like, we're like, we're like a satellite or old time radio towers. So we're always broadcasting who we are and what men and women need to do, but especially men, just who I talk to, we need to show women that true self and have the inside and the outside aligned. So there's something called congruence where this is who I am. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to speak my thoughts. I'm going to show you my real sense of humor, sensibility, personality. And women can tell. Women have incredible BS detectors. Your BS detector is better than a Richter scale. Uh, and you can tell, I think, when a man is showing you that real self. So again, it comes from, the, I think the question was, how can I help men be more honest? Or how can I tell when he's being trustworthy? Listen to yeah. your gut. Yeah. Uh, all the, when guys lie or BS, and I did it for so many years, it's all, it's all in the book, lots of, lots of deceptions and, and trying to overcome for what I thought I lacked. Women could just tell there was something off. Uh, there was, yeah, the, the channel was a little crooked. Uh, so I tell men be really freaking real and honest and women will be, will be able to see, oh, wow, I'm getting, I'm getting the real guy here. She may or may not like that. But if she likes it, she's going to be really into me. And we have a real chance for a deeper connection. How long do you think it should take before a guy introduces uh, a girl to his friends and family? Ooh, uh, again, case by case. I've done it on second dates. Uh, I've done it on seventh dates, 17th dates, as mm -hmm. quickly as you want to. I recommend men introduce a woman to your social circle as soon as you really see a future with her or you as soon as you see somebody you really want to connect because I want her to get a sense for hey this is what it would be like being Connell's girlfriend Connell's partner I want her to know that up front so she can either say I like this more please or no thanks uh, I don't like your nerdy hobbies and your friends <laughs> which hopefully is not the case but at least then I'll know. So I, I say do it. You can do it on the second or third date if you really think you might be into her. Right. How long does it take for men to figure out she's the one? Like, like you know, the list part, right? Like, this is what yeah. I'm looking for, future wife, mother, right? Home buyer with me, right? Big financial decisions. How long does it take for him to understand, okay, this is the one? Oh, oh, there you are. I love you. I'm back. Oh, I'm back. I don't... There we go. So, okay. okay. Uh, so his list, right? Yeah. You have a list, right? How long, how long is your list? Is it this long, this long? Tell me when to stop. I have, I have longer, longer. Mine is rolled up like a toilet paper. <laughs> just like so like a scroll, like a medieval scroll. So how long is it going to take you or the typical man to know, okay, she's the one. It's going to take a little time. It's not going to, I don't know what the, what's yeah. Some time? It's, like if they're, if they're seeing each other three times a week. Oh, that's, yeah, it's going to take, it's going to take several weeks 
many times hanging out because that early, as you, you mentioned earlier, that early honeymoon phase of dating, you're not really seeing the real person, right? You're seeing that best foot forward version of them. So I think it's going to take, I think it's going to take some, some weeks, maybe months, because I think of it like, I think of it like, I want to know if this person is going to pass the, the rocking chair test. The rocking chair test is you go into your mind, you shoot off into the future, 90 years old, you're in a rocking chair, you turn to your right, who's in the other rocking chair? Is it her? Is it somebody else? Is it empty? Um, and you're not going to know that on date one, date two, date three. It's going to take it's going to take weeks, maybe even months. That's why I like I do like to for all our little debate about when to kiss. I do like to go very slow in terms of, hey, now you and I are in a long term relationship. I think that's something that takes weeks or months. Yeah. Hmm. I just wonder if it's fair to be committed to somebody who doesn't know if they see you as their person yet. What do you mean? Um, you know, like, like we talked earlier about how it's smart to be dating multiple people at once. Right. So, but we, most women don't do that. When we kiss one person, we're not kissing and dating multiple other people. Um, that kiss locks us in. It tells our brain we've completed a vetting process. Um, and so is it fair to be locked into somebody who doesn't know that they, that you're their person yet? You th oh, so you think a woman is locked into a guy pretty early on? That most, one guy? Most, most women aren't kissing multiple guys at the same time. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that it, everybody's got their own blueprint, right? For how long it takes before you know. The woman I mentioned earlier, the one night stand that turned into a 1000 night stand, mm -hmm. it took me months, two or three months before I was sitting next to her on this very couch and I just remember thinking, this is about three or four months in, I remember thinking, I just, she's like my best friend who I want to jump on top of. Mm -hmm. It's like that best friend and that romantic desire and connection. I don't know when that moment happened. It, it, it was a slow progression. So is it fair? No, probably not fair that maybe, maybe the one, maybe she knew and, and I didn't know for a few months, but um, as soon as I knew, I told her. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was a year, a year long love affair. What split you guys on? She ended up moving way, way out of state. And I had to stay here in New York City. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Here's Distance. Go ahead. Should a man pay for the first date? Yes. Uh, the second date? I would say he should definitely pay for the first date and offer to pay for the second date. And just be aware whether or not she wants to split the check or pay for a round of drinks. I am a little bit old school in the sense that I think, I think men can still be men, even in the Me Too era. We can open doors. We can pay a lady a compliment. We can pay for the check. I like some of the old trappings of old time courtship. And I think mm -hmm. picking up the check for at least the first date and probably even the second one, I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. I like the idea, like I'm, I'm, I'm like an old fashioned feminist, if that makes any sense. What does that mean? I like that. So my, um, my, like my first, I, I'm on my second marriage. My first husband, uh, you know, we split everything 50, 50, this hmm. one, he owns his own business. He works 80 to hundred hours a week. It's easier for him to make money than it is to do household chores. So he pays the bills. I do all the household maintenance. Okay. Um, so gender roles, but not because, you know, we're, you know, that kind of thinking, but just because the circumstances require it in a way. Um, so I like the idea of a man who pays more often than the woman does, but she, yeah. and that's and that, because he's uncomfortable, right? He's uncomfortable with the notion of like, you know, no, like I'm the, I'm the man I do this kind of thing. I like right. that because I see that one of the things that women need to look for in a relationship is protect, profess, provide the three P's, which is, you know, good caveman. Um, so you, you want the kind of caveman who's generous, right? You want somebody right. who's like, I take care of you. And, and 
us in return, we take care of them in other ways. Like we'll, we'll be like, Hey, you need a new shirt. I got you a new shirt. Um, I love that. right. Yeah. That kind of thing. You, you need, you need some snacks for your car rides. I got you some snacks. I packed you a lunch, right? So kind of care, caregiving each in their own way. Absolutely. Reciprocity. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about this? I had a date recently where she insisted that she didn't insist, but she strongly wanted to go Dutch. Yeah. And to me, going Dutch is like kissing your sister. It's just so okay. <laughs> not sexy, friend zony. Just yes. and I didn't want to be I didn't want to be an annoying first date, but I said, How about this? No Dutch, just on principle. It's way more fun to take turns. You get the next yeah. round. Buy me the next round, and I'll get you know, it's just it's it's if I was if you and I were out at a bar just having drinks as friends, I would say, Hey, Canada's coach. Most Molson's are on me. You get the next one. Now we get to take turns, sort of doing each other favors. So I don't know about you. I don't like I don't like Dutch. No offense to the Dutch. I like your way. Yes. See, yeah. we can see eye to eye on some things. Absolutely. Absolutely. As you know, listen. I I come at this from a woman's way, right? Yeah. And I, I come at this as a social social scientist. Like I study sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology. You know, the words all question, the ologies, all the ologies, the, the, the saying question, everything rings through my mind. Mm. And so, you know, like Steve Harvey, act like a lady, think like a man, right? He, he introduced the no sex for three months concept to us. Like we weren't thinking about that before. We weren't thinking about setting times to see who people were and figure them out before we got too involved. And I turned it into no kissing because I, I, I kind of, I, I clued into the fact that what's the difference between kissing and sex if I'm not going to see other people, if I'm going to be locked in, if I'm kissing somebody, we're in. Like, if I mm. say I don't want to see you anymore, is it a conversation or is it a breakup? Okay. How about this? Can I, if I, can I kiss in in under three months if i'm kissing other parts of her body is that okay kissing does not mean no affection so i used to kiss like this little like seriously the more i liked them the more i would kiss like this little tender spot right here like mm, like it just you couldn't go too close to those because it was like just too tempting but i right seriously kissing the what the crow's feet kissing like the lines yeah, under his eyes there's something that's like, adorable this, this that's spot adorable right here it's just it's it's a sweet sweet little spot to kiss during lockdown i just basically kissed my pillow and kissed my elbow that's all i had oh no oh no but my uh, pillow wouldn't my pillow wouldn't let me kiss for three months it was really it was really like pushing back so oh well are you in la by the way no i'm in new york city you're in New York City. So what's so here's something that people say to me about dating in New York City. Um, slim pickings. Like, what's your experience with the dating in New York City? I've almost only dated in New York City for the for, I've lived here for 20 years. So yeah. it's it's the biggest city in the US. Uh, massive amounts of, of options here. Once you figure out how to find people. Absolutely. It's a great city to date in. Right. And you don't have to drive. You don't have to drive and worry about driving and Ubers for the most part. You can walk mostly. It's great. I've I've loved dating here. I used to have a boyfriend on 72nd in Amsterdam. Okay. Upper West Side. Upper West Side guy. Upper I West think side. that the thing about New York City or any metro area, any place where there's a reasonable amount of, of options, is that you can get almost too many choices. And this is probably something that's that is a, is something men want more naturally than women do. Lots of abundance, and because I came from a very low place, I, I never dated in high school, college. I I felt unworthy. I was I just felt like this nerdy, introverted dork who wasn't attractive to women. So as I write in my book, once I started learning how to date and get more options, I overdid it. I was dating too many women. I was, I guess you call it a player um, because I was trying to heal old self-esteem wounds. And what I learned was that, sure, it's nice to date around and get some options. Men do need to find out, hey, 
some women like me, I have options. But then what, what really will make you happy long term is giving to and growing with a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really what my book's about. Yeah. A lot of people want to know, like, I, I've done the journey of, of like, raising myself up, building up my self esteem, becoming a more confident person. And from the sounds of it, you did too. Hmm. What, how did, it, what were your tricks and techniques to increasing your confidence? Great question. First things first, I, I so I went out and I, I started working with approaching coaches, right? Learning how to approach women, which is something that I think almost every straight single man would like to do at least occasionally seeing an attractive woman or a woman who interests him and talking to her, making something happen. (laughs) But I, (laughs) what's that? We're going to pretend you didn't use the stalking word. (laughs) Stalking. Did you say stalking? Like stalking her? No, God, no. I did not say stalk. Definitely not. Uh, I talked to her. Talk to Uh, her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. stalking. (laughs) (laughs) Totally not what I'm about. Uh, I think most men want to be able to approach and flirt with a woman when so inspired, right? I always wanted to. So, but I couldn't, I didn't have the confidence to. So the question is, how do you get the confidence to do that or to take any romantic risk? And the answer is you have to, you have to use courage. Mm. Courage, courage is the currency that buys you confidence. You can't, I can't meditate myself into confidence. I can't drink myself into confidence for very long. It's got to come from courageous action. So my confidence came from approaching a lot of women, going on dates, getting rejected sometimes, getting accepted other times, and then the confidence came. And the other quick tip I'd give you or I'd give your audience for finding confidence is I think it's really easy to focus on what we think we lack as a single person and comparing ourselves to other people. Oh, am I as tall? Am I as attractive? Am I as rich as those other people? Instead, you want to make a list. I call it the awesome list. Write down 25 reasons why you're an awesome choice for any woman or man. And those reasons should be specific and they should be really easy to write. Um, They don't need to be fancy. It can be, I speak two languages. I um, am a good cook. I love my mom, I'm a good dad, whatever it is. Confidence comes partially from focusing on what we offer instead Mm -hmm. of focusing on what we think we lack. Yes. Guys, this is your homework. I hope you guys wrote that down. Um, So how should people view rejection? Rejection is something to embrace. It's not something to seek out per se, but we don't want to resist it because it's, it's baked into the casserole of dating it's just part of it you have you can't swipe on an app you can't go on dates you certainly can't go to a club in new york city or a bar and approach women and not get rejected it's going to happen so the way we want to what we want to do is take the we want to take the pain out of it most of it because here's why rejection is so painful for many men and i would imagine for women too rejection is this pandora's box you get rejected the box opens up and all of these negative emotions come out. Really, it comes down to the same thing. Oh, I got rejected, so I guess I'm not enough. I guess I'm not worthy or attractive. What I recommend we do, and there's two whole whole chapters in my book about this, is we need to redefine what rejection is. Uh, Rejection is not some misinterpretation about your, your unworthiness. It just means that person isn't into you, and that's totally fine. You know what? I'm not into, I'm not into deep crust uh, Chicago style pizza. I like thin crust. Nothing wrong with deep. I just like thin crust. Um, so if you get quote unquote rejected after a date, after uh, on an app, um, you approach somebody and they're like, hey, thanks, but no thanks. They're not saying you aren't enough. They're just saying, hey, you're thin crust and I like deep dish. That's okay. <laughs> thin, crust, thin crust is awesome. I love that. Now I'm hungry for pizza all of a sudden. I know. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah. I, I were... want to know what, 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 was the, what was the inflection point in your past that made you put you on this path to becoming 
uh, yeah. Canada's dating coach. There has, there has to have been like a turning point moment or a, either a low point or a turning point moment for you. When was that? It's, it's one of those things that I didn't go find it. It found me. Um, so you know how like you kind of look back on your history and you go, okay, well, you know what, this just makes sense. Um, mm. it, it was never, I thought about doing like, it's just people have been coming to me since my twenties. Um, they would call me up, you know, when people are upset about something, so they're in a state, uh, mm. within 10 minutes, they say, your voice is so calm. Like you're, you're so soothing. I feel so much better now. And that just was a pattern. Like I, I just, uh, you know, tended to be a, a go-to for people. Um, whatever. I was doing dog training, behavior modification, right. In my twenties. Hmm. Um, and, and so studying dog psychology led me into people psychology and sociology. So I just consumed that for several decades. I was a stripper. So, you know, and perfect opportunity to observe, right. And learn. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. I met my, my second husband while I was a stripper. This was a whole new breed of male compared to everything I'd ever been with before. And I went, ooh, okay, look at all these qualities. And I went, okay, so let me compare these to other people and let me see like what's similar and what's different. And this is how I came up with the, the you know, guys versus men, right? There's certain okay. characteristics to that. guys, certain characteristics to men. So I started like, you know, here's my template, right? It's like, here's, here's your, what do you call it in, in a study, your, your focus, your group, your something. Yeah. The study point, Your contr right? The control, control group. The control group. Here's my control yeah. group. And so I would compare. And, um, and so that was really interesting to me. And then I got, you know, for me towards the end of my stripping career, and I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? And um, I actually happened upon Matthew Hussey. And I don't know if I was thinking about being a dating coach before I heard him on the radio or if I heard him on the radio and then I thought about being a dating coach. I'm not sure what came first, the chicken or the egg on that one. Mm. But it was around that time that I was thinking of doing this. Um, and, and so it was like, you know, the universe was just going, hey, like, wake up. This is your next thing. Like, as a stripper, you know, a nerdy stripper, I would spent so much time in the dressing room. <laughs> so much time in the dressing room with a book right so girls would often find me and like met, met, met about their relationships and I bet well this is what you need to do and I sort of became like a house mom kind of figure um people would talk to me about their problems and I would help them especially in relationships I got girls to break up with guys and get into better relationships and then I'd help them through those relationships right and so it was a very natural evolution for me to come into this but the hardest point really was me coming into my confidence to step into it fully. But the moment that I did was when I realized, like, I actually went through like a really depressive episode. And mm -hmm. uh, like, I, w I went full on down the rabbit hole, like addiction, suicidal ideology, the whole kit and caboodle, right? And I, seriously, like everything was fucked up in my head. Like I remember mm -hmm. looking in the mirror, I looked at my butt, I was like, ooh, I look juicy. The next day, one of my friends said, you're anorexic. I went, what? I got on a scale. I was underweight. So mm. I, I just was, so I was like, okay, let me go to the doctor. So I went, I went to like a doctor. I had her set me up with like, you know, free psychotherapy basically because, you know, Canadian healthcare, thank you. Um, and so, and, and I was seeing a nurse <laughs> practitioner. I was seeing two people for my mental health. And as I started to get myself under control, which was quickly because I'm just good that way. Like, it's just, it's intuitive for me. Right. And it's yeah. like, like when I realized I was, I, I was off the cliff, I, I pulled myself back in and intuitively I was doing all the right things. And I was telling them what I was researching when I started doing in meditation of 5-HTP and, and, and going to this retreat with this woman and they're like, what's what's five h what's what's that again right meditation shrinks your shrinks your amygdala and i'm like motherfucker i'm going to sessions and you're supposed to help me but i'm teaching you and that was the catalyst for me when i realized that i was teaching mental health professionals that's when i realized i was qualified yeah teaching the teachers that's got to be an incredible confidence boost I, you know, up until that moment, I, I hadn't quite made the leap yet. 
But mm. when I realized I was teaching the teachers, which, you know, I talked about dog behavior modification specialists. I went to a year of school and, you know, what they were teaching me wasn't enough. I was also going to the public library. I was going online. I was getting every single book, every single video. And I taught my teachers new tricks. So um, I, brought, I brought clicker training to the institution that was teaching me leash training. So it's, it's just my way. It's my way to be extremely curious yeah. and to live my curiosity. So then I can teach people what I've learned through my curiosity. And listen, my mom was abusive. So what did yeah. I do when I left home? Well, I got myself an abusive boyfriend, right? Because, hey, the pattern continues, doesn't it? Um, so I got the abusive boyfriends. I got the cheaters. Um, and, and then I, I found a great one, but then I was the wrong person in that relationship. I was insecure. I was controlling. So then I had to fix that shit too. Um, so it, it is just everything for me has lined up so that I can be a really good teacher when it comes to this. When you met your future husband, you mentioned certain qualities he had yeah. that the boys or guys didn't have. Yeah. What, what were some of those qualities that really knocked you out? So there's 12. <laughs> okay, go through as many as you want. It's your show. Uh, so um, is he financially responsible? Uh, is he controlling? Um, let me see. Uh, is he... Oh, you think I would know by heart, but like, <laughs> there's just so much. There's so much. There's so much. Let me find this. Um let me find this. I'm going to list all 12. This is, this is going to be a rare treat for, for my people who are watching right now. All you guys who are watching, lucky you, because I never, I never say all 12 online when I do my lives. I say that's a trade secret. You got to get the book to see it. Um, so uh, validation, if they have multiple women on the go that are ego strokes because getting their validation from how hard they work or his mm. one woman's attention is a, a guy trait versus a man trait um mm. jealousy if they're territorial uh right they they're jealous if you have male friends that's a red flag um because men are secure right guys are insecure yeah. men are secure uh appearances if they want you to admire them based on how they look rather than their integrity that's a guy versus a man men want to be valued for who they are on the inside right uh, selfishness if they have a what's in it for me attitude if they won't do anything for people who can't do anything for themselves that's a guy versus men are generous for the people they care for um so control if they're upset that they don't get first access to your time or money they want to control your environment that's a guy not a man men give you freedom ideal relationships have freedom going both ways agreed absolutely uh, responsibilities. So guys complain, try to get out of their responsibilities. Men take on their responsibilities with pride and effort. Uh, affection. If it's hard to get his affection, like I dated a guy, he didn't have sex with me unless I bought him shit. So if it's hard to get his affection, that's a guy, not a man. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, effort, if they try to gain maximum benefit with minimal effort, guy versus men, men take on a lot. You know, they know that working hard gets them ahead. Uh, finances, finan got to be financially responsible. Blame, sure. guys don't take responsibility for the negativity. It's your fault I'm late. It's your fault my car broke down. It's your fault we're fighting right now. Um, men will take responsibility for, you know, like, oh yeah, I realize I fucked up and I should have done this better. Um, paying guys want you to pay for them. Men don't feel comfortable if you pay for them. Uh, mm. and I don't mean like every single time, but men do not feel comfortable if you pay for them more than they pay for you. Gotcha. Oh man. I once dated a, a doctor, female, obviously. And she loved to treat me. And I was just like, hey, you're, the, you're making way more than I am. I'm your, I'm your um, plus one tonight. Take me, all, <laughs> take me out all over town. I loved it. Yeah, uh, she paid more mama. than I did. It was, yeah, I, hey, I didn't have enough money to be a sugar daddy. I could be a Splenda daddy, mm -hmm. but not a, 
not a sugar daddy, but um, yeah, those are awesome rules. Not that you need me to tell you that, but you nailed mm -hmm. those. Yeah. And then the last one is happiness. Men want mm. you to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, a really underrated, I'm, and I quote this in the book, there's a study that came out last year, something like 80,000 single women were surveyed. And the number one quality they said they wanted in a man uh, was simply kindness. Okay. Just a kind man. Yeah. And I think that's a really good, important message because my clients or guys who might be reading my book, they get a lot of bad advice from people unlike you, people who don't get what women want. Mm -hmm. And they get advice from pickup artists who say, be some bad boy, be some alpha male, uh, show her who's boss. And I, I go back to that poll. I say, hey, why don't you just be kind? But, but still be a man, not a boy or, or a guy. Be a man who's also mm -hmm. kind. And that's the dream for a lot of women. Just he treats me well. He's a man, but he's kind to me. And he hits those 12, those 12 points that you just hit. Yeah. I think that it's on point. What's the number one most attractive trait to a man? In a woman, to a man? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it changes from guy to guy. I can only give you my number one attractive trait, which is I love, I love banter. I love, com I love conversational, playful sparring. You know, I like, I want to be in the Lion King. You know how when Simba meets his future wife, I forget his name, and they're just like wrestling and playing, but it's playful. I love banter. I, love, I like a verbal chemistry, just a banter back and forth. The thing that I see most often in men, I would say the thing they look for is they, they love it when a woman can make him feel um, important, special. They just want to feel special. Uh, and I think we all want to feel that way. So it's not so much, oh, here's what I want in a woman. It's here's what I want in a woman that will make me feel something. And for so many men, it's just feeling special and worthy and good enough for you because we really like you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, we, we have like this, this culture where, um, you know, women feel the need to say, I'm strong enough to do it myself. Mm. And uh, we we can't overdo that with men because then they end up feeling like they actually don't have a place in our lives. Like they need to know that we need them on a certain level. So you know, I say let him kill the spider, even if you can kill it yourself. Like you know, <laughs> baby, you're the spider yeah. killer, right? But I say at the very least, let him know that he's the one who can put his arms around you and tell you everything is going to be okay. Yeah, that's beautifully said. I like that. I would love my future girlfriend to say, come, come get the spider. Cause I'd be like, yes, I get to go into man mode. That feels good. Yes. That feels really good. Do you think that, do you think that the me too era is scaring a lot of men into being so afraid of making a mistake that they won't even be men? Well, it's, I think we have to read like, I, I think we need to pull back from the, the go-getter mentality, right? Like, go, just go plant that kiss, right? Um, I do think we need to, to pull back from that because it doesn't leave room for consent. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't give us an opportunity to say, I know you well enough to want me enough kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we are having a lot of conversations, and you see a lot of people saying that, both men and women, saying, if it's not a hell yes then take it as a no, um, right? It's like, you, we need to take coercion out of the equation. And she's like, oh, I'm not sure. It's like, well, how about now, right? Um, mm. So, you know, I, I think we need to pull back on this, this sort of macho-ness about men because that's what's being taught by pickup artists, right? Is get that kiss in. And there's a subconscious psychology behind that that is being used against women which is that the chemicals in the kiss send a signal to her brain that she's completed a vetting process and locks her in. And so it creates exclusivity to the vagina for the male. But like you said earlier, the male doesn't become exclusive with that kiss. Mm. So it's, it's an unfair dynamic that happens. Um, so I think we need to have these conversations about what actually happens 
when physicality takes place. And I don't think it diminishes men in any way. Like, let me, you talked about the best sex of your life. I'm having it with a man who waited over two years to get there with me. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are like, well, what if you wait that long for first kiss and it sucks? Honey, money, if seriously, like what's wrong with you that you don't think you're supposed to teach them how to use the hardware? Everybody is different, right? Like, you know, Connell, is every woman not different? Have you not had to touch them differently in order to please them, right? So it's 100%. A given that we have to teach you how to use the hardware. But we have this fairy tale thing, this Disney thing that the first kiss needs to have fucking butterflies coming off of us and, and shooting stars happening over the place. And it's like, no, like that technique needs to be taught too. Like my husband's first kiss was so bad because he was like, nah, nah, <laughs> right? Yeah. So bad. And I taught him, I, I, said, I, said, just, I said, just close your eyes and open your mouth and let me kiss you, right? And, and you, you got to do it like a, like a nice, super sexy turn away. You don't break the intimacy. You just break the kiss. And then you say, let me kiss you. Show me how I like it. And, or show you how I like it. And then you, you show them your technique. We make out every single day. Like, seriously, that's one of my relationship rules is kiss at least twice a day, minimum five seconds each. We, that's a minimum. Like, we, we get way beyond that every single time, right? And the last time we made out was at about 5.30 tonight. So um, I taught him how to kiss and he's the best kisser I've ever had. Mm. We waited two years to have sex because the fact is I was married when he met me. Um, so we waited two years to have sex, but oh, is he ever good, right? Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think teaching men to wait for women to be ready emasculates them in any way, shape or nope. form. Um, I think what it does is it empowers them to know that they they have something f like fair and square, right? Like, like yeah. we are familiar enough with each other for me to like, not just want you, I want you, want you. Beautifully said. Mm -hmm. uh, in chapter 13 of my book, I talk about this relationship I had with a woman named Alex, who I dedicated the book to. And the rom the most romantic night of my life was just sleeping with her, literally sleeping, just holding yeah. her, holding my best friend. And you know you're in love when a, your sleeping partner drools on you and you find it adorable. Oh, like, oh drool. Oh, yeah. she's amazing. She, I'm so glad she's drooling on me. And there was no sex, no kissing. Well, there was a little kissing, but no sex. Yeah. Very G PG rated and it was just such a nice refreshing change from the do whatever it takes to get laid mentality yeah. that I had drummed into me by some of my coaches mm -hmm. and they taught me some cool stuff they taught me some really cool concepts like presence and being authentic and having your own fun and not being needy at the same time the whole pickup community also still to this day they still teach the whole be the man get her into bed seduction seduce and just it's just all so gross right <laughs> yeah <Ew>. yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> get it done get, it, get done. it yeah and it's like i you know i i don't know i i think there's there's um the the dreaded word friend zone right like and right because that's is is that not the male's worst like it is is it just the word that just strikes fear in your heart is <laughs> it's up there it's up there yeah definitely yeah i talk about that a lot with my clients and i don't want i want to be i want to try to be clear as i convey this i there's nothing wrong with being friends with a woman thank you being friends first absolutely in fact friendship should be the one of the cornerstones of a romantic relationship if it becomes romantic at the same time, men need to learn, and I'm here to help them, I hope, in my book, to learn how to uh, help a date, a conversation, a relationship, amplify the, the, the genuine romantic interest that's there. And some men, so the, to me, the friend zone is not a woman wants to be my friend. I love female yeah. friends. My best friends are women, most yeah. of them. However, at the same time, I know the pain of, oh my gosh, I'm really into her. She doesn't like me or, or she doesn't feel that way about me. And I don't know why. I don't know how to make this 
be how to get us closer. So I do want men to be able to dial up that genuine real chemistry and know how to know how to make that happen when there's mutual interest. To me, to me, the friend zone is, oh, she wants to like you, but you're being so lame. You're being such a guy that she's not feeling the way she wants to feel. To me, that's the friend zone. Yes. I love this. I love this. I think this is a perfect place to end this conversation, actually. Because I think, I think that's such a beautiful point that you made. Um, Thank you. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find you, where they can find your book? Absolutely. Yes. So I wrote a book called Dating Sucks, But You Don't. Let me show the product. Do, do, do. And it's, a, it's basically a Me Too friendly dating guide for men, helping guys learn how to be authentic, make genuine connections with women. And it's available on my website at datingtransformation.com. And you can also go to Amazon. And just type in dating sucks, but you don't, it can always find it there as my phone falls. And uh, <laughs> let me just say what a fun, stimulating, quirky, awesome conversation this was. Thank you so much for having me on. I agree. This was super awesome, Connell. I love that you came on and we did this and we're doing your channel tomorrow. That's right. Back to back. Back to back. How's the good questions for me? I'm going to be up all night. <laughs> going going I deep you. <laughs> i'm gonna try to st i'm gonna try to stump you for sure now it'll be a blast I'm, i, I, I like this uh trading trading places trading pages Bring it. or accounts Bring it. uh and my people love you I, we got we got Poletis saying love you guys uh brit said i love the back and forth conversation it's awesome guys if you want to catch us tomorrow night um so Connell's at Tell us again, Dating Transformation, right? Yeah, my Instagram is at Dating Transformation. Yeah. And, and uh, that's where I live on Instagram. Yeah. So we're doing this again tomorrow night at 8 p.m. So everybody who's watching tonight, if you want to come watch us do this again tomorrow, I'm pretty sure we're going to talk about some different stuff tomorrow. So, yeah, like I said, Connell, go on your page and, like, ask people if they have some questions. And let's, let's just, like, let's just blow people out of the water. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I can't wait. Awesome. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Da -da -da -da. Okay, my loves. Okay, my loves. Hello, lovelies. Why do men cheat? Men don't cheat, my love. Guys cheat. Uh, men typically don't cheat. Sometimes people will cheat because their relationship becomes susceptible. Um, guys, are we all good here? I don't know. I still have, I'm seeing Connell, but I know he's gone. I don't know how we're supposed to, dating transformation left, but he's still taking up half my screen. Oh, okay, we're back. You were amazing. Thank you, just followed him. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that was interesting. I love, I love, uh, I love being able to have these conversations with people in the field. Um, it seems like I challenge a lot of ways of thinking. Um, it doesn't seem like there's there's other people who are picking up on this no kissing for three months dating rule yet. Um, so, so let's let's see how we're going to revolutionize dating. I, it absolutely needs to happen on the ground level. It absolutely needs to happen on the ground level because uh, like the common cultural noise is kissed by the fourth date. Otherwise, there's something wrong. And it just doesn't make sense to kiss to see where it goes instead of see where it goes and then kiss the right one if you're looking to get into a long-term relationship. So love the challenge too. Love your dress. Thank you. Thank you. Wonder what I'll wear tomorrow. So let me see here. You got a bit blurry. It's still blurry. Okay. Well, I'm going to pop off. I'm going to, I'm going to pop off. I'm going to go head over to TikTok and go have some conversations over there. So anybody who wants to come and join me on TikTok and go do some Q and A's over there. Um, do we have some newbies? Anybody who's a newbie, by the way, take a second to like click the follow button up here. Um, these are my books behind me. These are some of my books. I actually wrote eight. So if you guys are curious about my books, there's actually a, a link tree in my bio. There's a quiz in there. It's a what book is right for you quiz. If you take it, 
um, it's going to list all of my books and it's going to show like a little percentage bar beside each one. It's going to show you how much you want to read each one based on how you uh, answer the questions. So lots of good stuff for you in the link tree in my bio. Do check that out um, because I have freebies in there for you. I've got a free book. I've got a free long distance relationship guide. Um, so come and check that out. And I'm going to see you guys over on TikTok. I'll see you soon. When I figure out how to log off from here, which, uh, oh, there it is. Okay. I love you guys.